Feel our hearts with you. 
Won't forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance, the exodus of my heart. You found me, you freed me, held back the waters for my release. Oh, Yahweh, you're the God who fights for me, Lord.
Have you church? Trust that you are being blessed by the service, blessed by the worship. If you are, why don't you say something on Church Online or on Facebook, even on YouTube if you're watching there. We're so glad that you could be with us today. And we always encourage our people to be generous. Of course, we want to encourage you to be generous with your time. And we'd encourage you to spend time in a view group every weekend. And if you're not in a view group, we encourage you to get into one. You could join us in our virtual uh, Next Step Lounge. Of course, we're staying live for that straight off the service. And you can use our WhatsApp number to just WhatsApp say, I would like to join a view group and we'll get you connected. Uh, we also want to encourage you to be generous with your, your talent and your treasure. Um, and, and of course, how you can be generous with your gifts and your talents is, is by getting into growth track, discovering your gifts, discovering your purpose. Um, and straight off the service again, join us, use the WhatsApp number. I'd like to do growth track. And you can take the growth track step and you can discover your gifts and you can start to make a difference. The happiest people are people who've got great friends, they're in view groups, and they've got great purpose. So we encourage you to do that. I also want to honor our church for Mandela Day, for you guys stepping out. But even before that, during this lockdown season, we have been able to help thousands of people, um, and those people have been part of family. So uh, the the count's even bigger than the, uh, the 10,000 people we've already helped. Um, so we just want to honor you guys for that. And in this season, as you put God first, I encourage you to put God first uh, with your faith. And of course, Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, um, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So even as we put God first and we honor Him um, in our time, our, our treasure and our talent, specifically when it comes to finances, it's going to require faith. You're either going to be honoring God uh, based on reason or faith. Um, you can do all the calculations and you can come up with an, a reasonable amount to honor God with. Or you can actually do it out of revelation where you pray about it and you let God reveal uh, what He wants you to give. And, and why honoring him with a tithe is so important. Why don't you go pray about that? And what you can do is you can actually give out a revelation, what God reveals to you, and then you can give by faith, not just by reason. Um, even people who don't believe in God, uh, they give out of reason. But people who are believers, who are children of faith, actually honor God with their faith. And in the season, as you honor God with your tithe and your offering, I encourage you to do it in faith. You need to be going to God. Let's see, I'm going to pray now. I want to thank everyone who's been giving. Uh, you've partnered with us. We've been able to reach further because we've linked hands together. So we just want to thank you guys. I'm going to pray quickly. The, the details, the QR code for giving will be on the screen. And you can take that step um, if you want to honor God in this area. But let's pray. God, we just thank you so much for what you've done for us. We thank you, Jesus, that you are our example when it comes to giving. And, and you gave your life by faith on the cross. And so we want to honor you with our faith, God. We want to give by faith. Reveal to us what you want us to give. Reveal why honoring you is so important in the area of finance. And I pray that the joy of, of giving would come on to all our people. Thank you, Jesus. I pray you use this to build your church. So I pray the church gets stronger, gets healthier in Jesus' name. And everyone who believed that said, amen. Come on, if you... Are agreeing with us, say amen online right now. Uh, we're about to go into the message. Uh, Leanne's got a phenomenal message. Come on, if you're ready, I want to encourage you to lean in to comment. If you haven't shared the service, please be generous to your share. Use your share for this service. Share the live broadcast. And, and as you do that, so many people can see it. Enjoy the message. Good morning, View Church Table View. I hope that you guys are all warm and well. And oh man, I cannot wait for the day when I get to see your faces again without masks and we are together again in real time. And I'm trusting God that that day is coming soon. But for now, uh, you guys know that Andre and I appreciate it so much when you guys participate in the um, services on a Sunday. So if you agree with something I'm saying, why don't you light up the comment box, give us an amen. Um, and uh, yeah, let's just enjoy being together this morning. I think before I do anything else, I'm going to open up in prayer. Why don't you pray with me, church? Father God, I just thank you that you've got a word for us this morning. And I pray that it will speak to every one of our hearts, God. I pray um, that every one of us will be moved, will get a revelation from you, God. I pray for soft hearts. I pray for a spirit of wisdom and revelation. And I thank you that your word always accomplishes what you set it out to do. In Jesus' precious name and all of God's people said, Amen. So we had a really special weekend in our family. My eldest daughter turned 
eight on Mandela Day. Um, I cannot believe that my baby girl is eight. It's making me feel very old, but it's also reminding me that that means we're actually in the end of July and we're heading for August and I'm like where on earth did 2020 go because it feels like we were just in January you guys agree and I was thinking about that this week like it feels like we would we just started the year um, and of course in January none of us had any idea how this year was going to pan out but it got me thinking about how in January Andre and I prayed and um you know, we, we, we really look to God um, about a, our vision um, as a church for 2020. And um, so we then prepared and delivered a sermon to you guys late Jan, early Feb, about how we really feel that as View Church Table View, we are called to be a church that builds this nation. You guys remember that? Um, we've got the little sticker on our fridge, so we look at it every day. We get to build this nation. What an honor, what a privilege to get to spend our lives doing this. And you know, the thing that I really felt God impress on my heart and speak to me about this week, and I believe that it's a word, not just for me, but for us as a church, is Leanne, you might feel right now like the whole entire world is on pause, but your purpose is not on pause. Come on, can I get an amen if you agree with that? Can you light up the comment box? I'm gonna say it again. Even though the world may feel like it's on pause, your purpose is not on pause. Why? Because we serve a God who even in unpredictable seasons, maybe uh, seasons that feel limited, he is in control and he has called us and he has given us a mandate and he never asks us to do something that he hasn't graced us to do. Amen? And so we're going to talk about this morning how even in this season, as View Church Table View, we are called to build this nation. Is that good? Awesome. So when I was about 10 years old, my parents um, and I and my two siblings um, we all lived in the old part of Tableview. Now, at that point, Tableview was a much smaller suburb. Um, when I say the old part, that's near like Tableview Primary. Um, there was a few houses around where the church is, but there was no Parklands, there was no Sunningdale, there was no uh, Bloberg Sands, West Beach, Big Bay. It didn't exist. It was just the old part of Tableview, and we lived there. And when I was 10, there were rumors going around that they were gonna open up a suburb called Bloberg Sands, and my parents started speaking about maybe buying a plot and building a house. Now, I know this is a bit strange for a 10-year-old, but I got really into this, okay? And we're going back a fair amount of years, so I didn't have any internet access. But what I started to do as a 10-year-old was I started to draw plan after plan after plan of this house that we were going to build and live in. And I would actually get hold of a newspaper a clippings that had houses on with their layouts and I would get hold of magazines and I would even beg my mom to take me maybe once a month on a Sunday to just walk into random open houses. You know when they used to do the random open houses on a Sunday? And um, we would go in just so I could look at the layout to get ideas. Okay, so I was taking this seriously. And from, yeah, from about 10 to 12, I drew so many different plans. Eventually I had the perfect, you know, house configuration sorted out. It was gonna be a U-shaped house. Um, and the garden would be in the middle of the U to keep the wind out and my parents and the office would be down the one side and the living room in the middle and the kids on the other side. Like I, I put a lot of thought and effort into this. And eventually when I turned 12, they went and they bought the plot and they sold our house. And now it was time to build this house I'd been dreaming about for two years. So I go to my dad and I'm like, we need to talk about the plans. And my dad's reply was this, oh, Lanny, he always calls me Lanny, this is a nickname for me. He says, Lanny, I found a really cheap, affordable architect 
and um, he has ready-made plans and if we just take the ready-made plans so the house that he's already designed it is way cheaper so we've just taken his design and we're sorted luckily I had turned 12 by then and um, I had the Spice Girls to distract me and I wasn't too devastated but um, yeah, we started building the house. It wasn't the house I designed, but we were super excited as a family. We got to build a house. We were, yeah, it was really, really exciting. And I will never forget the very first time we drove there as a family of five to have a look at our plots of land with the foundations. And uh, my sister and I had been sharing a bedroom up until this point and I had been promised that I was going to get a bedroom of my own so that was my main concern that I was going to have my own bedroom and we get to this house and we get to these foundations and we all just kind of turn and look at my father like what have you done like you know did you use a real architect because the house seemed so tiny it was like you couldn't swing a cat in it and we were like dad what have you done this is like a this is like a matchbox and we were, I mean, even my dad was scratching his head. He's like, ah, I'm not sure what's going on. And um, to cut a long story short, the house was not that tiny. It was just the way the foundations are built. The perspective is that it's tiny. But actually, as the walls went up, we saw the actual size. We saw um, reality. We had, a, we had a different perspective. But I'll never forget that day but luckily when the walls finally went up we actually realized the house was not that tiny okay it, it, they hadn't made a big mistake it's just that when we looked at the foundations we were looking at the house with a different perspective but once there were walls and windows and doors it was actually a really decent size and thank goodness the foundations were done properly because my parents are still living in that house I don't know like 24 years later or something um, they're still there and they love their house 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 10 says by the grace God has given me I laid a foundation as an expert builder and someone else is building on it but each one must be careful how he builds. What a reminder that you and I are called to build in every season of our lives. And God tells us that we need to build carefully. And so if you're taking notes, and I encourage you to, the first point that I wanna make is that we need to understand that our foundation deserves the highest focus and attention. Our foundations deserve the highest focus and attention. Now this is a lesson I feel like I am continually learning my whole life through. And sometimes I'm like, Leanne, when are you finally going to actually get it? Because, listen, I'm just being real here. I find the busier and the crazier things get when we're homeschooling kids, trying to work, trying to prep messages, trying to be healthy, trying to do all these things. The easiest thing to actually drop is the intensity of, of my quiet times. So instead of pushing into prayer and actually speaking to God and letting him speak back to me, I resort to listening to podcasts and getting a secondhand revelation from Stephen Furtick or some other great preacher. Instead of pushing into worship and connecting with God, I'll shorten my time in his presence. Instead of actually reading the Bible and getting a deep revelation, I'll settle for a quick little devotional. Those things are all good, don't get me wrong. There's a place for daily devotionals and podcasts. But hear me, the most important thing in your life are your foundations. And we can't be skimping on those. Our foundations are our prayer life, our time in worship, and our time in God's Word. And we need to dig and dig deep. I did a bit of research about foundations for the sermon. And you know, the thing with foundations is that 
most of the foundation you can't see. You just see the top level when you're looking at a house being built. The foundations are sunk down deep, they're hidden. And it's very easy for us to live our lives hiding how deep and how strong our foundations really are. It's pretty easy to fake it till you make it, right? Until a crisis like COVID-19 hits. And how do we respond? Do we push on? Do we push into God? Do we fight for our nation? Do we choose to be positive? Do we choose to pray for our president? Pray for our people? Trust God for a miracle? Or do we fall apart? Because I believe it all has to do with how deep our foundations go. I want to read this to you. This was taken out of an article um, about building. And it says this, Although a building may be able to support the downward thrust of its load without a foundation, it's the sideways motion that creates the problem. As the ground changes temperature with the seasons, it expands and contracts, causing instabilities that make the building lurch. And that means that the stability depends on having the structure's base resting on a level deep enough to maintain a constant temperature. This should ensure that lateral movement is kept to a minimum. Ask yourself this morning, because I've been asking myself this all week. Are your foundations deep enough that if some kind of instability comes, you are rooted enough to stay standing. Amen? Is that good? If, if, if this is speaking to you, encourage me because I'm being honest, I'm being vulnerable here. And I think we all need to grow in this area. I don't want to be swayed by instabilities. I don't want to be swayed by circumstances. I want my roots to be so deep that when times get tough, I can stand by the grace of God and push on with what He's called me to do. Come on, View Church. He has called us to build this nation, and it is a privilege. The second point I want you to remember is that if we're going to build in tough seasons, we need to be okay with small beginnings. You know, the Bible actually says, do not despise small beginnings. And I think it's very easy for us as human beings to struggle with that. You know, we just want everything to happen and to happen now. Um, I told you guys about our opinion when we first saw our house. I think, you know, our family always joke, we're like Italians, so no one keeps quiet. So everyone was like saying to my dad, what have you done? Like, who have you hired? Like, we were quick to, you know, we didn't want to wait for the finished product. But don't despise the small beginnings. If you look at the Bible, we're encouraged to celebrate the little things. Um, you know, and in every season, I want you guys to hear me, please, when I say this, in every season that you are in, whatever God's placed in your hands, He can use for His good. You might feel like right now you are just treading water and you're just managing to keep your head above water. I want to encourage you, just keep on swimming. Your breakthrough is coming. Keep on persevering. Keep on praying. Come on, we're going to be a church like that persistent widow who carried on going to that evil judge until he eventually gave her what he wanted. We're not going to an evil judge. We're going to a loving father, but we are going to be persistent. And the Bible is full of stories of men and women of God who were persistent. They wouldn't give up. They had small beginnings. You look at David. He was this shepherd boy who was overlooked by his own father, not even presented as a possibility of a future king. Talk about small beginnings and being overlooked. And he had to shake it off and he ended up becoming one of the greatest kings of Israel and he wrote a large portion of the Bible. We look at Joseph, I mean being sold as a slave by your own brothers. 
and then getting thrown into jail unfairly for doing the right things. Talk about small beginnings. But both of these men pushed through. They persevered. I believe they prayed. I believe they worshipped. I believe they got revelation from God and they pushed through and they did awesome things for our God. Don't despise small beginnings. Your breakthrough is coming. Can I get some amens? Can I get some comments? One of my favorite scriptures, I tell you guys this all the time, do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. If you're feeling like you are treading water right now, just managing to stay above, keep your head up, don't throw away your confidence. Your life is in the hands of the king of the universe. He's got you. Keep on praying. Keep on persevering. And I believe your trial will become a testimony. You know, when I was in my first year of medical school, God was really good and I got an academic bursary and so did my older brother. Um, he was also studying. He's only 17 months older than me, so we were boom boom on top of each other. And he, he'd also got an academic bursary for first year, but you can't really get them from the university from second year and up. And I could hear my parents talking and I knew that they could not afford our university fees. And I knew it was stressing them out. And my personality is I took it on and I got stressed out. And eventually I got to a point you know, towards the end of first year where I said, God, I'm going to stop stressing and I am going to just pray and pray and pray until you do a miracle. And that's what I did. I journaled about it. I prayed about it. I said, thank you, God, that you were going to provide for our fees. Um, before I handed it over to God, I even went and hustled and managed to get my mom a part-time job at UCT because I thought that if she worked for the university, she would get a discount on our fees. And I later found out that um, actually only full-time employees get the discount. So I was, I was hustling there in the beginning. But luckily I turned to prayer and I prayed and I prayed. And guys, you won't believe what happened. We ended up connecting with a woman who ran a trust for a gentleman who had passed away quite recently. And he had set up a trust for Methodist ministers, children who wanted to study medicine. So my dad was not a Methodist minister, but he was a minister, a pastor. And when this lady heard about us and our family, she remembered my dad's dad, my grandpa, who had run a church in Durban. And she said, you know what? This gentleman set this up for Methodist pastors, but he would have loved your dad. He would have loved you. Here we go, full bursary for both your kids for the rest of their studies, textbook, money, etc. included. Come on, how faithful is our God? He, he can do what seems impossible. I hope this encourages you this morning. You just keep knocking because when we keep knocking, it shows God that we have not thrown away our confidence and he promises to richly reward us. And point number three, if we're going to build this nation in a difficult season, we need to be okay with getting our hands dirty. You know, building a house is not for sissies. Have you ever looked at a builder's hands? They are rough. They are calloused. Builders always have this hectic suntan because they've been in the sun for hours. You know what I'm talking about? It actually requires effort and exertion and um, it's not just this easy, um, you know, behind the desk job. But you know what? What I love about this church is that this church is filled with people who are not afraid to get their hands dirty. I think about Issy Dima team who work tirelessly every week to help vulnerable women and children. I think of our blanket drives. I think of our Mandela Day. I think of how we managed to get close to, to people in the noon after the flooding. We've got a church full of people who are not afraid of hard work. We've got a worship team who get up at the crack of dawn and, and will play for four services sometimes. So this church is made up of people who share 
our service four times on a Sunday online. Not because they don't have anything better to do with their time, but because they know that each time they share the service live, there's a greater opportunity that someone in their life might jump on to their Facebook feed and have an encounter with Jesus and have their lives changed forever. That's an unselfish thing to do. We've got intercessors who pray for hours. I'm going to finish by saying this. If you've got children or if, you, if, if you've actually been close to children, you would have heard of Bob the Builder, right? In fact, the song for Bob the Builder was it made millions of pounds and it was like a number one hit in the UK for years. I'm not going to sing for you guys right now. But the words go, Bob the Builder, can we fix it? Bob the Builder. And everyone shouts, yes, we can. And the whole point of this children's program is that all of these um, building vehicles come together as a team, always as a team, because we are better together, amen? As a team, they come together, and as a team, they can fix anything. And I want to tell you guys this morning, as a team, as a church, as a body, as the body of Jesus Christ, the bride of Jesus Christ, when we come together, can we build this nation? Yes. Can we see lives changed? Yes. But we need to do it together. And I want to encourage you, if you have not yet done growth track, come on, you can hop on today. You can discover your purpose. If you're not part of a view group, come on, you need people who have your backs. You can't do this on your own. If you don't believe me, believe Bob the Builder. But you can join a view group today and you're going to see a WhatsApp number coming up. That's our church WhatsApp number. You can WhatsApp us to get info on view groups. You can WhatsApp us to get info on growth track. We can get you hooked up. Um, you can do it at home in your spare time. Um, and I want to encourage you. You want to do life with other people. Just quickly, as we're closing, if you are listening today and I'm talking about this God that we are living for, who gives us purpose, a God that cares for us, who protects us, who loves us, who has our back. And you're saying, I don't actually know this God, but I want to get to know him. I want to give my life to Jesus. Maybe you've already done it, but you've fallen away from him and you want to get back into a relationship with Jesus. If that's you, I want to pray for you right now. And you can just pray wherever you are. Um, in your living room, you can pray along with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for paying the price for my sins. Today I ask you to be Lord of my life. I thank you that I'm yours now forever. And I thank you that you have a purpose and a plan for my life and that you love me passionately. In Jesus' name, amen.